Dreams, nightmares, things of the real world that only exist in our minds. That is what the psychiatrist dealt with every day, hour after hour, grown men and women talking about their personal problems. And this one was different. He pulled the plug to the phone on his desk, as per procedure while dealing with patients. He sneaked a look within the watch and saw that it was 3pm. He usually got off at 4, but he had one more patient to deal with. He pressed a button on the desk. Send number 65 then. He grunted in the microphone. The 65th patient he saw was a man. Tall, wearing a black t-shirt with jeans. With black, curly hair to match his outfit. Probably drugs. The psychiatrist silently thought to himself. The man sat down. A few seconds passed. With the clock on the wall, punctuating with each second with an audible click. Finally, the man spoke. I've been having nightmares. Mm -hmm. The psychiatrist applied. A few more clicks. But the problem is, I've only been having one nightmare. Have you considered halting your usage of cocaine? The psychiatrist snapped back, realizing it was a mistake. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't be sorry, Harry. I'm... What? The name card's on your desk. Oh, well then, let's start by asking you a few questions. How old are you? These questions passed back and forth, the ones that were going to the man lacking reply, and the ones going back to the psychiatrist possessing one. Eventually, the psychiatrist came to the last item on his checklist, dream description. With a large empty box below it, he took a deep breath and braved himself for the event that was going to happen next. This was the part of the job he hated most, delving into their minds, connecting with the real world with fantasy. Would you kindly describe your dream for me? The psychiatrist asked. There was another period of silence. The man sat there, thinking frowning in a solitary light at the top of the small room. The psychiatrist peeked at his watch again. Half an hour had gone by, and this was just questions. It all begins in a room, the man said. Uh, I'm sorry? My dream. Oh. The psychiatrist picked up his pen and started writing. Could you say where it started again? In a room, it's... it's... Okay, okay, that's good. Slow down. He jotted down some more notes. A phone rings. Did I mention that there's a door in the room and a desk? What happens next? After the phone rings, the door opens, and there's a black abyss there. I, or the person that I'm playing as in the dream, will always get up and walk towards the open door. And then? And then I realize that I can't. That there's someone, something in the room with me, disguised as something harmless, like a desk or a chair. And that something is powerful, like the devil, or a ghost, or some supernatural being. And it all stops me from walking into the abyss. Is that all? No. No, 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 no. There's one more part. When I look at the abyss, like the being in the room, I can just feel. I know that there's something out there. And I know that because it's getting closer to me. With each dream, it's like it's getting closer. Yesterday night, I reached out, and my hands touched it. Do you remember what you felt? The psychiatrist asked, intrigued. <laughs> I, uh, I can't remember. Sorry. Thanks for your time. By the way, it helps if I can talk to someone about this. It's no problem, the psychiatrist said. He set up the shake hands with the man but the man continued to remain seated in his chair. It helps, the man said. Really helps. The phone starts to ring, and the man just smiles.